him. Come on. Domino has decided to stand next to me for this one. Uh, not doing this on the couch because I have, uh, well, one, still working with this thing, and hopefully it'll make the audio quality better. And two, uh, I got a lot of jewelry supplies. So, uh, to start us off, hello, my name is Mildly Gothic. Welcome back to my channel. Um, the creature off to the side here, if you are new, his name is Domino. He is my dog. Uh, what I like to do here on this channel is a variety of artsy things, typically with a gothic or dark spin to them. Uh, painting, crafting, jewelry, sculpting, uh, baking, all sorts of things. Uh, and I'm really excited for October. Um, I've got some cool stuff planned. It's still only going to be one video a week, except with something special for Halloween. Uh, I do too many other things in my life to be able to do some kind of October special, at least right now. So. What we're doing today is more jewelry. And I had a really cool idea. Like sometime like way last year, I purchased candy corn, beads, and some really cool spider web beads with some spiders on them. They have, um, I don't see them. <laughs> I'll find them before I get started. But they've got, it's an oval or a circle, and then they've got little um, loops on the end for you to like hook chains through and such. And I really, really liked them. And so I bought them. I bought a variety of Halloween stuff. I never actually made any Halloween themed jewelry last year. I purchased these from, I believe the shop is called Gremlin. Uh, it's a very cute uh, little shop, you know, gothic stuff. But I've never actually, until recently, actually got to the point of making myself Halloween jewelry. So I said, why not? And I focused specifically on the, the spider webs and the beads, kind of going for a very web look. I explain a lot of it in the voiceover that I'll get to. Um, I'm actually filming this after I've already made the necklace. It's going to be an asymmetrical kind of web design and I'm really looking forward to it. So uh, it's going to, this isn't really as much as a tutorial. This is kind of, again, my thought process when approaching these kinds of projects. So uh, if you're interested in seeing what one, the final product looked like, and two, the process it took to get there, stick around. And with all that, Let's get started. So first things first, I knew I wanted to incorporate these beads, of course. That was the entire inspiration for this. But the rest of it was I knew it was a project that I wanted to do chained together with some bead accent pieces sticking to the color scheme of gray, white, and I guess silver and pearlescent, kind of in that color, very monochromatic color range. And so the first step is coming up with a variety of little segments in some different, you know, combinations and configurations so that I can figure out exactly what I want to do with this piece. And so I decided to make two of every combination that I came up with because it's easier for something to look more cohesive if the pieces repeat themselves. If every design was a one-off, there is a potential that it would, it would introduce unwanted asymmetry and the design itself is already asymmetrical and so I didn't want to introduce an extra level of complication or confusion in the design on top of that I wanted to create some level of cohesion so across the strands because it will be a multi-strand necklace I wanted to create some element of cohesion and consistency so these are I think they're called like loop or hook end earring shafts so they are a straight post that end with that loop and so for my purposes I had to finish those the other straight end with my round nose pliers bend it backwards once and then around the loop the other way and that's how you get that loop to be very nicely centered against the shaft using my cutters to trim it and then using my round nose and my straight nose pliers to straighten and finish out those circles and I have to do that for all of the pieces that I've created so that they can be those other elements in my series of chain. That's the most tedious process probably is finishing off the round of all of those. Um, and you get good at it after a while. If you look at a lot of the jewelry projects I did when I was super young, a lot of the rounded, like the circle ends to finish things are very large and uneven. And I can't say that I get them perfect every time now, but I'd like to think that I'm a little bit better. So next was kind of planning the general flow of how I wanted things to go and figuring out how many strands I actually wanted to do. The piece that I'm using to help achieve this multi-strand actually has nine circle holes. 
and originally I was gonna do five strands to have every other one but kind of once I started getting into the creation of some of these and working it out I realized that was gonna be way too many it was gonna be way too dense and it just wasn't going to be the look that I was going for after kind of laying it out I decided I wanted a few more little small pieces that I didn't end up finishing off because I was still debating and I started bringing in the chain so the chain that I have um, I sometimes either cut it because I'm impatient and don't feel like opening the links or the links are actually not welded together and so you can open them and attach them as necessary. I decided to start with the very top row of the necklace, so the one that's going to sit closest to the neck because that will dictate the minimum width of the necklace and kind of give a starting point for everything else as far as where it will hang. You can purchase boards that have necklace lengths and measurements on them. There was some point in my life where I had one of those. I no longer have possession of that. But those can be very helpful for beaded necklaces or trying to plan out specific lengths of, you know, chain or whatever necklace you want to design. My effort here was kind of working by eye. And I didn't end up filming the small bits of me trying the necklace on and seeing where it sat and I realized that I probably should have I think it would have been interesting and added something but I didn't end up including that um, but I will explain what happened after each iteration of me trying it on what I discovered what I changed that sort of a thing so the result of the first fitting was I needed to make this shorter and I decided to shorten each length of chain to about seven links. Um, I wanted this first row to sit as straight across on my neck as possible and hanging from the height that was accurate for my neck. And so that involved significantly shortening each of the lengths of chain. Once that was done, I moved on to finishing those last two new pieces that I created as far as uh, bead accents, because I wanted to make sure try to make sure that I had enough to cover the entire scope of this necklace. And whenever doing something like this, I always find it to be better to spend the time to prepare ahead of time, which is why you'll see me multiple times lay out a general pattern for the beads and the pieces that I'm going to connect with the chain, even though it changes multiple times and I never really settle on one. It helped give me an idea of the length of each of the strands and whether or not I needed more pieces which I decided I did because I wanted to do at least four if not five strands and in order to accomplish that I needed more of the bead separator pieces so that I could space out the spider pieces. Arguably I probably went a little overboard as far as incorporating basically every single spider and web bead that I had but since those are the inspiration for the design I decided to keep them in um, I thought it ended up working out super well and so you'll see I'm making more little bead pieces and I apologize for Domino's little shake there. So just like with many things this is a constant process of back and forth of determining the length of chain that I think I need and applying it to the pieces. I went row by row so that I could have greater control and assuredness as I was working towards the project because again I've set the first row to the size and length that I want and so not everything has a reference point to match with and I used the length of seven pieces of chain from that first one as kind of my guidance for the rest of this I don't want it to look too off and as I add more pieces for each row of the necklace if I keep the chain count the same it will automatically space out the necklace in a relatively organic way as the scale between the pieces will be the same it's just increasing in width because there's more of them now and due to the nature of kind of sticking with that seven length of chain I decided I didn't necessarily need to try it on after this one because I had a pretty good idea of how the next ones were going to hang so I moved on to planning out my next rows and then kind of immediately into working on that third row of the necklace I do apologize for some level of the redundancy within this video, but when it comes to jewelry making, especially a layered necklace like this, 
it really is a repetitive process. You were doing the same thing over and over again. It's typically a pattern. So like the chain mail or something like that, it is just repetition of a pattern. And in this case, it's a relatively arbitrary pattern because it's a pattern that's not really a pattern because I keep changing the pattern. But it's the same series of motions as far as opening the chain, cutting the chain, managing the links and the distance. Trying to maintain a beauty to the disorganization and the asymmetry because it doesn't have to be perfectly symmetrical in order to be beautiful. So again, just like with before, I have a pretty good idea of how this is going to sit. So I decided to just go straight into making the fourth row because I could adjust it at the end afterwards. I had a pretty good idea that at least the third row was going to sit exactly where I wanted it to. Uh, the fourth row, I wasn't entirely sure about, but it's easier to adjust it once it's created than try to guesstimate when it hasn't been made yet. So I took the time and this I'm starting to change a little bit of the spacing between pieces because this is the furthest row from the top and I don't want it to be unnecessarily long so I went to some lengths of five and then I think even some of shorter uh, just trying to mess with the perspective and spacing of the pieces even between the rows to make sure that it doesn't look too redundant vertically and that things are kind of evenly mismatched, if that makes any sense. Trying to maintain a beauty to the chaos. So once all the bead pieces were sorted, there were some accent details that I knew I wanted. If you'll notice the piece that I am connecting all of these multiple strands to on the left hand side of the screen, the outside holes that connect upwards are very far out in comparison to the rest of the holes that I've connected my strands to. So in order to tie into the web design and also make this not as obvious, I decided to include some outside connecting strands to tie that in and make it a little bit more cohesive and web-like, and I think it was the neatest little addition. So the result after trying on the necklace with all four strands was something I should have anticipated in the first place and actually wasn't too surprised by. One side was looking very, very crowded. And I've done similar style necklaces to these before. Um, and I looked for spacers. I looked for silver spacers that I had, but unfortunately the jump ring that I'm using on the opposite side of this necklace is very, very thick. So I didn't have any silver spacers with a wide enough opening except for crimp beads. Crimp beads are a very special type of bead. They're a thin metal tube and you can use a crimper, my blue tool off to the right there, to squish them and make them stay in a certain location. What I'm using them for is not entirely that exact purpose. I am using them to squish them to prevent the jump rings that are holding the chains of my necklace from bumping into each other. The final detail that I wanted to add was the web accents. And I only decided to add a couple because again, I really didn't want it to get too overcrowded. And so I added a few at the bottom and I added one to the top and that seemed like just enough to help it be absolutely perfect. Like you get a little bit of the web idea, but it's not super crowded and it just really helps sell the whole thing a little bit more. I'm all about the small details when I have the patience and wherewithal to remember to include them. And uh, I think that the little small connecting chains absolutely help sell the idea of a Black Widow-esque kind of necklace. So I tried it on again and now it is time to add the finishings. You can't have a necklace if you can't actually fasten it. So I chose a lobster claw for the fastener for this necklace. Uh, I have a lot of them. They're very standard. I find them very easy to work with. Uh, I trimmed the chain down on the other side to an approximately to an approximate length that was shorter or equal to the smallest that I would ever want the necklace. And then typically I will make a small chain towards the longest I would ever want the necklace. Of course, this is for me personally, if you were making this for somebody, kind of guesstimate, but you want to give them plenty of room to make the necklace the size that they desire. And once that's done, I switched to trying to rotate and flip some of the pieces that I noticed were persistently staying upside down. This is a nature of the chain. Chains have two angles considering, you know, they attach to each other and you see that each one is 
basically 90 degrees rotated from the other one. So when you're working with just the spider beads, you don't really have much choice other than to just try to flip it. But ideally, likely, all you need to do is add another chain link to rotate to the other degree possibility, and that should help it sort itself out. Unfortunately, some of them stayed kind of twisted, um, but that's all right. You know, nothing's entirely perfect. But I think in the end, uh, trying to flip them was a great move and will help save a lot of hassle in the long run in trying to wear it. So yeah, that's the last step, is trying to get everything flipped and organized. Hello, welcome. This is the end of the video. Uh, I decided to spice things up a little bit, go for a whole look. Uh, feeling very Black Widow inspired. I also just got this dress and the neckline was perfect. So um, this necklace will move, um, you know, with movement and stuff. And I realized with my hair down, it might make it hard to see it. I just thought it fit the aesthetic better. Uh, this was a fun little thing to do at the end. Nothing too serious, nothing too deep. Um, but we can have a little drama. So that was the process of making this necklace. I keep, yep, are they flipping? No, they're not. Um, I'm really happy with it, even though I technically, I think I need to make it shorter actually. So it sits more of where I want it to. There we go, I think. Um, I don't have a mirror, so I can't exactly tell what it looks like right now. But if you liked this, um, feel free to hit the like button, subscribe, comment if you want. Uh, any other jewelry projects you think might be interesting. Um, very much, kind of liked the Black Widow theme, even though I know I didn't use any red in the necklace. Uh, I thought it fit with the thought and the aesthetic. So if you want to, yeah, add a reaction. Let me know what you thought. I'd love to hear it or see it. Uh, it's kind of cool that people engage with these videos sometimes, even though it's my random little corner of the internet. If you happen to like this random little corner of the internet, please subscribe, stick around. Hi, how are ya? Uh, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.